Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another edition of Foodie Fridays. So this Friday, I'm bringing y'all something sweet. I'm bringing you a cookies and cream Oreo Blondies bar. Now these bars are really good. We've made them many times and everyone that's eaten them has enjoyed them. So I thought this would be something good to share with y'all being that I wanted to make it this week for the fam anyway. So this is a from scratch dessert. So you need a lot of ingredients. So let's get through them. You need one cup of softened butter, which you see over there. I already have it softened and ready to go. You need one cup of brown sugar. You need one, excuse me, half of a cup of regular white sugar, two eggs, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, a 3.4 ounce box of instant vanilla pudding, two cups of flour, half a teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, one cup of chocolate chips, and it can be milk or semi-sweet, just whatever you prefer, and one cup of white chocolate chips. And then you need 16 Oreos. Now the recipe calls for double stuff. I've used the double stuff before. I've used off-brand. I've used the golden Oreos. It all tastes good. So whatever you want to use as far as the cookie, that is solely up to you. But whatever you use, it works just fine. So those are all the ingredients you need. Like I said, this is a firm scratch dessert so you do need a lot but it is really yummy in the end so let's go ahead and get making these dessert bars all right guys the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our one cup of butter and it needs to be softened so put that in your mixing bowl we're also going to have one cup of brown sugar and the brown sugar is what makes this recipe i've had people ask me before what's the difference between a blondie and a brownie and a brownie has cocoa powder blondies do not have the cocoa powder so that's the difference between a brownie and a blondie and the blondies have the brown sugar and whatever else you add to them but you don't add the cocoa powder so one cup of the packed brown sugar needs to go in there and make sure you pack it as well as you can. And then half a cup of white granulated sugar goes in as well. And you're going to mix this and then we're going to add the one teaspoon of the vanilla extract and the two eggs. y'all so I have got everything incorporated as far as the eggs and the vanilla the next step is we are going to take the vanilla pudding mix the instant pudding mix and you're going to add that to your mixture and you want to add it until it's nice and light and fluffy is what the directions say I find that this does thicken it up quite a bit because it's already a thick mixture before you add this and then this is a pudding mix so it is going to be kind of thick in my opinion so just keep that in mind when you're making it it's supposed to look like that so we're going to mix that up next and let it get light and fluffy but again I think it's a little bit on the thick side. All right guys, so that looks good. So now we're gonna get all of our dry ingredients and we're gonna add this to this wet mixture. All right y'all, so the next thing you're gonna do is add your dry ingredients, which is your baking soda, your flour, baking powder, and your salt until mixed well. So I went ahead and mixed everything in a mixing bowl and just put it all in there and I'm going to take one of my measuring cups and I'm going to incorporate it in the wet mixture a little bit at a time. So you don't want to put too much in there because if you've ever made anything in the mixer before and it might do it even with the little amount that I put, when you turn this on it'll blow up like powder everywhere and make a big hot mess. But that's just the name of the game when it comes to baking, right? So let's go ahead and mix this a little at a time until it's all well mixed together as far as the dry ingredients.
All right, y'all, so it has mixed well. We've had a big flower bomb go off like I told you to, so I will have to clean up around the actual bowl. So after you have mixed all that in, guys, you're going to fold in your white and your semi chocolate chips and the Oreo. So I'm going to get that ready, and we're going to fold those in next. All right, guys, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to add your Oreos, those 16 Oreos, and I went ahead and I chopped mine up on a cutting board, 16 of them. You could probably put it in a bag and mash it with like a rolling pin or something too, but I've always just chopped mine up and I like mine a little chunky. And then I do one cup of chocolate chips. I did the semi-sweet and the white chocolate chips and I just went ahead and put them both in this uh, measuring cup right here. So you're going to put that in your mixture and I'm going to tell you guys it's going to be really hard to mix. It's going to be super thick and it's going to be super hard to mix but you're just gonna have to muscle up and mix it together because it's really yummy, but this is um, a chore as far as folding it because the recipe says to fold it, but like you can see, it is super thick. Sometimes what I do is I just put everything in there and I keep it in the mixer and just mix everything in the mixer like that. It makes my life a little bit easier, but I'm gonna try to fold it like the recipe says today, but. It is very, very thick, but once you get it all incorporated and mixed together, um, like you see, it, it comes together a little bit once you put a little bit of muscle behind there. You put this in your pan and put it in the oven and it is just so good. I've gotten so many compliments on this recipe when I've made it and brought it to work or just brought it anywhere. Just people rave about it and we love it as well. It's a really, really great addition to your recipe arsenal as far as sweets go and it is super sweet so I've said this before on the foodie Fridays I am not counting calories and I am not promoting uh, skinny waistlines with some of these recipes so <laughs> y'all are gonna have to alter them if you want to do that I'm not saying I don't make anything that is healthy but y'all know anything with butter and stuff just makes everything better all right, so that looks like it's pretty good and incorporated. Y'all want everything mixed in. You don't want any part of that mixture to not have any cookie or not have any chocolate chips in it. And I didn't say that this recipe was a clean one either because between the flour and the Oreos, it is a little messy. All right, so that is mixed all up. I'm gonna put this in my pan now and spread it out. All right, y'all, so I'm just gonna pour everything in my nine by 13 pan. You do wanna have it greased. I went ahead and sprayed mine with some of the Baker's Joy. Really love that. It's great when baking. Nothing ever sticks. Never have any issues when using that product. So you're gonna put everything in here and then we're gonna spread it out. Again, it's going to be thick. So if yours is thick, then that means you did something right. Don't want it runny or thin by any means. All right, so there it is. You're going to spread it out now. It will be a little hard to spread. Not too bad, but it's not going to be easy. And you want it to be evenly distributed as far as how much is in the 9 by 13 pan. So you just spread it out like so. And when you cook it, guys, you are going to cook it for like 20 to 22 minutes. When it comes out, it's going to look like it's not done. What I do is I let mine sit for a few hours and I just a baking tip. If you let something sit in the pan after it's come out of the oven, it will continue the cooking process once you've set it out. So it will continue to cook, so you don't need to set it in the actual mm -hmm. oven. All right guys, so it looks like it is all done. We're gonna put it in our oven that is preheated to 350 degrees and we're going to cook it for 20 to 22 minutes. And again, do not overcook this because if you overcook it, once it sits in the pan for a little bit, it will be hard and you don't want them to be hard. So 20 to 22 minutes and it will be done. So let's stick this in the oven. All right y'all, so it has been 22 minutes. That's how long I cooked mine in the 350 degree oven. And this is what your cookies and cream Oreo blondies will look like when they come out. So as you can see, the edges are slightly brown, which you want. The middle is all gooey right now. So you're gonna... You're gonna wanna wait. Um, I like to let mine sit for a few hours and that way it hardens up a little bit so you can cut these. Cause if you try to cut these right now, it'll be a hot gooey mess and you will have like 
um, Oreo blondie soup instead of bars. So you definitely don't want that. So let these guys sit for a little bit. Remember, they are going to cook a little bit in this hot pan as they sit, so you want that to happen. And I will come back and plate it and tell you how we like to eat these when it gets done sitting. All right, y'all, so these are the blondies after they have been sitting out for about two hours. And as you can see, the chocolate is still a little melted in the center where it was gooey, and you want them to be firm enough to where you can cut them like I have in bars. Now, this is a very, very rich recipe, so if you want to cut them smaller because it's very rich, you might want to do that. I know some people that I've had eat these before the size that I cut them. They cut them in half because they are rich but I like rich desserts, so it doesn't bother me any. Now here is the one that I have plated for y'all to see, and these are so good. This is how I eat mine with a tall glass of ice cold milk. It tastes like cookies in milk. It tastes so delicious, guys. Y'all are gonna love these. I'm telling you, you will not regret, regret making these, and they're not a difficult recipe to make, even though everything's from scratch as far as baking, but everybody that's ever tried these loves them, so you will be the life of the party if you bring them anywhere so guys if you are loving these foodie fridays videos please give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're not with me already because i've been doing a foodie fridays every single friday on the channel and if you like the desserts please comment below about the dessert recipes i've only this is only the second dessert recipe i've made on foodie fridays everything else has been a recipe recipe for meals love you guys so much i got kids to 10 i will see y'all in the next video thank you so much for watching bye guys